What's Up Wednesday, guys. In this week's What's Up Wednesday, we are talking about some new updates to the Google Chrome web browser. And because I know that you are very busy, we are going to keep this short and sweet. I've got three things for you. And if you want to read even more, check out the link in the What's Up Wednesday post. But let's get right to it. First one on the list is Chrome's live captioning. Captions make online content more accessible, but sometimes platforms or websites don't have a built-in closed captioning. So what do you do? Well, now we can use the Chrome live caption. How does it work? Well, I'm gonna start playing this video so that you'll see the icon appear whenever you're on a page that has media as audio. But then I'm gonna mute myself so you can hear me or mute my audio, not mute me. But you'll notice up in the top that this little music note icon appears. And this is your Chrome live captioning. It's already built in. It's not an extension that you have to go add. But if you click on that, you can toggle on those ex um, captions. The first time you do it, it may take a second to load. I've already done it before, so mine's pretty quick. But you can notice right there at the bottom of the page, now it's dictating everything that Marcus is saying in this video. So if you're in a room where it's really loud or you just can't turn on the audio, but you still need to watch content, there you go, you can read it at the bottom. Or you're working with students that are hearing impaired, this is a great um, accessibility tool that's already built in and you don't need some third party uh, program for them to get the captions. So I love, love, love this. Right now it is only available in English, but I have been reading through some of the blogs that as this feature becomes um, more commonly used and kind of um, older in age, so to say, that that could be some enhancements they do that in adding some new languages to it. Because we know that would definitely be helpful for our students who are not um, English speakers or native English speakers. Uh, so we'll continue on and leave Marcus on this page here and talk about tip number two. Tip number two is the tab group. So we know as teachers, educators, we are working with tons of tabs all the time. So you can group them as you're working to kind of keep them categorized. How do you do that? Right click add to a new group, and then give it a name. So if these are one that I'm working on for work, I may want them to be blue, and then I can drag over any others that go in that group, or I can simply do a right click, add to group, and then choose an existing one. If it's some personal things, like I got my Bravo on here, shout out any Bravo fans, or maybe I'm doing some little online shopping, but I wanna categorize those as something different, right click, add to group, new group, and maybe I'll call these personal. So however you are grouping your um, tabs for the day or whatever you're doing, you can easily name them, color code them, and group them together. And lastly, tip number three, Chrome has actually built in a QR code reader so you can automatically get a QR code for any website that you're on. So if you have a website that you want to um, move from the computer to your phone easily. Well, we know in the age of COVID, everybody knows how to use their QR codes now because when we go out to eat, that's how we get the menu. And Google has built that right into the Chrome browser. If you click in the Omni box up here and then you choose the QR um, icon that's next to the bookmark star, the QR code will show up right here. Open up your camera, you can scan it on your phone or your iPad or tablet and automatically get that same website pulled up on that device. You could also download it. So if you wanted to have a QR code to a particular Google form or website that your students should be using and you want them scanning that QR code in the classroom, you can download that QR code and print it out. Maybe this links to your teacher Google site that you have parents access. This can be a QR code you send home with the students. They can scan it on their phone and go to your teacher Google site. The ideas are endless, but I love this feature. And this is one I use all the time because I'm on the go and I'm having to move from my computer to my phone so that I can get out the door. And this is how I can easily switch that work over into that aspect. I hope you find these helpful and we will chat with you on next week. What's up Wednesday. See you soon.